All right, guys, this is Matt Webb with UT Extension Marshall County. This is the third video I'm talking about rotational grazing on small acres. And what I want to do now is I want to talk about a little bit about grazing math a little bit. And so I have a ruler here with me, and I'm going to tell you how to, how to use it in the math behind it. But you can see that all the sheep around me are grazing or contented, and so that's what we want to see. And so, with these forages, a lot of our cool season perennials, so we got, there's some orchard grass right here, and then right next to it we have some fescue, and we got a little different colored green, but also their characteristics are a little different. But both of these grasses is recommended to leave three or four inches of when you leave a paddock in rotational grazing. That way, there's enough leaf area to come back quickly after a grazing event. It's also important in hay production as well to leave that amount. But what we're gonna do is, what we have done is we have walked this entire strip here with this ruler and we have took an average of how tall the forage is. Now up here at the top, the forage is a little taller than, than it is halfway down the slope because the soil is thinner. Uh, halfway down the slope, but then it gets taller at the bottom where the soil's a little deeper at the bottom But what we do is is we walk We stick that forward stick or that ruler down And we try to get a guess of how tall that forge is so right there. It's probably about 11 or 12 inches right there, so And what we'll do we'll walk across the paddock and we'll get you know 10 or 15 samples and then we'll take an average so the average for this particular, this block or this strip was nine inches. And I mentioned before that we want to leave four inches when we leave. And so we have five inches that we can use to feed these animals with. And there has been various amounts of research done on how many pounds per inch there is. But a rough average for fescue orchard grass is about 250 pounds of dry matter per acre for every inch. So we got five inches that we're going to work with, 250 pounds of dry matter per acre. That tells us we have 1,250 pounds of dry matter per acre that we can work with. Okay, So that's, that's how much we know that we have. Now, in the previous video, I talked about in this particular setup that we have here at my property is that there's 160 feet from a five wire, hot wire, high tensile fence down the middle of the property down to the perimeter fence. And then I have um, green metal posts that are 55 feet uh, from each other within that high tensile fence. So 55 times 160 is, is a is 0.2 acres so I said we had 1250 pounds of dry matter per acre and then we times that by 0.2 acres so for this particular strip we have 250 pounds of dry matter that we're going to feed these animals okay and we're going this is going to feed them for two days so if we divide that by two days then we're left with 125 pounds Okay, so that is what we have to feed these animals in one day, okay? The next part of the equation is how much do those animals need? And there has been various amounts of research on how many pounds an animal eats and different things and based on their stage production. And you can look up all those requirements and charts online in various livestock books. You can look those up based on their, their production. So in this particular field, we have 15 ewes. Part of them is lactating, part of them have been dried off now, and we have 13 lambs. So what I have done is we're gonna take 15 ewes, and I'm gonna say we're gonna feed them five pounds of dry matter a day. So that tells us 75 pounds, okay? Then I got 13 lambs. Okay, and I'm gonna say three pounds of dry matter. Some of them may not eat that much, but it's always good to give a little extra. So that's 39 pounds. So our total is 114 pounds, okay? 
that we're going to need for one day. Okay. So they need 114 pounds for that one day. If you'll recall from our math before, this little strip here for two days is 250 pounds. And we say for one day we have 125 pounds available. So we, we have reached our target in here. So when we're done, you know, we'll have that four inches left for that grass to come back quickly. We've satisfied their needs. We've we've stopped this trip right and they're ready to move on to the next one. So that's some some grazing math for you. There's various publications out there that can show you the equation. But if you have any other questions about rotational grazing or grazing math or anything like that, be sure to reach out to marshall.tennessee.edu at our UT Extension Marshall County website. And I hope you have a good day.